Assuming that you have a reasonably good background in statistics, you understand standard deviations, correlations, confidence intervals, hypothesis testing, regression analysis, and so on, you can be an expert in implementing statistical analyses with stat tools in a matter of minutes. Yes, literally in a matter of minutes. There are only a few things you need to understand about the way stat tools works, and then you can be off and running. The most important thing you need to know is the topic discussed in this video, stat tools datasets and its dataset manager. Most datasets you work with in Excel, probably over 99% of them, are structured as you see here. They are rectangular ranges where each column corresponds to a variable and each row corresponds to an observation, also called a case. And the variable names are in the top row. Virtually all statistical software packages expect data to be in this format, and StatTools is no exception. However, StatTools requires you to specify this range as a StatTools dataset before you can perform any analysis on it. So this is the first step in almost all StatTools analyses. To do this, you select any cell in the data range and click the Dataset Manager button on the StatTools ribbon. You are then asked whether you want to create a StatTools dataset. When you click Yes, you see this Dataset Manager dialog box. It provides many options, as described shortly, but you can often accept the defaults and simply click OK. It is that quick. Before clicking OK, you might want to change the name of the dataset to something more meaningful, such as spending data. This is especially useful when your workbook contains multiple StatTools datasets. You should also check the data range that StatTools guesses. This data range should contain the variable names in the top row, at least if the Names in First Row option is checked and all of the data you want to analyze. The StatTools guess is usually correct, but you can modify it if necessary. You might also want to check the Apply Cell Formatting option, but this is totally a matter of taste. Unlike many statistical software packages, StatTools provides other options that you might occasionally find useful. The Multiple button opens this dialog box, which allows you to have a dataset spread over multiple ranges. The secondary ranges can have the same variable name headings as the original data range, but they don't have to. However, in either case, the ranges should contain the same variables in the same order. The layout option is columns by default, meaning that the variables are in columns, but in the rare case where your data variables are in rows, you can check the Rows option. You can also uncheck the Names in First Row option, but this is usually not a wise decision. The variable names are used in StatTools reports, so you should create a row of variable names if it doesn't already exist. The list of ranges in the Variables section is mostly for informational purposes. Each row shows one variable and StatTools automatically supplies range names to the columns, such as st underscore region. You will see these range names in formulas in various StatTools reports. If you like, you can click any of the output format dropdowns to get this dialog box. It shows the various formatting possibilities, which are then used in StatTools reports, but the auto settings typically work fine. Assuming that you check the Apply Cell Formatting option, you see the following when you click OK. Specifically, the top row is painted blue to remind you that this is a StatTools dataset, and other formatting changes are evident. More importantly, however, StatTools can now perform its analyses on this dataset. When you save this file and then reopen it, StatTools remembers that you have a StatTools dataset so you don't have to go through the Dataset Manager again. However, if you click the Dataset Manager, 
You can modify the dataset specifications, and you can even delete the dataset. Just be aware that this doesn't delete the data. It just removes the dataset from the Staff Tools collection of datasets, and it also removes the special formatting and the range names. Now you are almost an expert on Staff Tools. You know that before you can do almost any analysis with Staff Tools, you must first create a Staff Tools dataset. There are a few other things you should learn to gain total expert status. These are discussed in the Data Utilities, Variables dialog box, and Utilities videos, so you might want to watch them next.